I'm Morgan Jaremus with RT Book Reviews and I'm here today with Nalini Singh. And when I say that she's one of my all-time favorite authors, I mean all-time favorite <laughs> authors. Uh, I think I should get royalties in your series by now because I think I've bought maybe three dozen of each one. And <laughs> I give them to my sisters and to my friends and to my neighbors and to anybody that I know that can read. That is awesome. I love you. Yeah. You're like my new favorite person. Exactly. Yeah. Well, I know your your side changeling. I only have I only have one qualm with that, and that is when I when I start to explain your world of the mm -hmm. side changelings. It, it's so complex and there's it's so rich. It takes a really long time to explain. I'm like, I wish there was like an encapsulated way of like, and then this happens, but there's not. Yeah. Because there's, we have size who yeah. are psychically enhanced with That's a lot right. of powers. Yep. And they're emo they've um, conditioned emotion out of themselves. Mm -hmm. So they're very, they're kind of like Spock-esque. Yeah, I guess. very cold mm -hmm. and, and a very um, logical and, yes. um, you know, everything has a cost-benefit analysis. You know, they're not driven by emotion at all. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. And very successful also, yes, though. Yes. They, they run businesses. And yes. they're, they're kind of the captains of industry. Yes. Yeah. Because that that um, that kind of being able to just cut anything down to the what's it worth kind of thing. Mm -hmm. You know, you're going to be good at business. You know, you're not going to be uh, compelled by any kind of emotional tie to anyone. Or, um, oh, I, want, I really want to do this even though I know it's not a good you know, businesses and that's, you know, the sites, nothing like that, yeah. you know? They don't like or dislike, even no. when it comes to food. They're like, well, this is acceptable nutrition. That, yeah. They don't, they don't yeah. say, I like eating No, this. they don't, they don't say, yeah. they don't, and because it's a slippery slope, you see. Yeah. If they like food, it's, it's sensuality and that, that's just not permitted in any form. Yeah. Okay, so we, we've got the size yes. and we have the changelings yes. and the changelings are shifters. Yes. They're, um, they're shifters, but they're, they're true shifters, you know, they're, they can shift at any time and they're very at home in both parts of their skin. Yes. So it's not just, it's not like I'm driven to shift and it's really horrible and painful and I don't want to do it. You know, it's completely the opposite. They are true shifters in that they love, they love to shift into either form. Mm -hmm. And you know, if they're, they're in the human form, the, and the animal, for example, the leopard is still part of them. And some of their characteristics are going to be leopard-like in the way they, they interact, you know, with, with um, people. And then vice versa, when they're in the animal form, um, they're still able to think, you know, that their human part is still there. So they're, and you know, they are like the opposite of the side. They're very sensual. They're very tactile. Mm -hmm. They love family. You know, pack is everything. And they're, they're tied together by these really strong bonds. And, yeah. they're, and they really, they make decisions based on their gut instinct, their yes, emotions. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. So they will, they will go down to the wire, you know, and, and put their lives on the line to save a member of the pack. And, you know, it's not, it's not, oh, it's not worth it because it's just one person. You know, one person is everything because mm -hmm. they're, they're, out, they're family, you know? Yeah. And then you also in this world have the humans. And yes. humans are straight human. They don't have special abilities. They don't have powers. They don't shift. Yeah, and they're caught in between these two powerful races, you know. And for a long time, I think everyone thought, well, they're kind of like the worker bees of society. They're not, mm -hmm. they don't, you know, they don't have any powers. They don't have any political power. Um, and they're, they're just, you know, they're, they're like the last rung of the, of the ladder. But I think you're slowly starting to see in the series they do have a part to play. You know, it is an important part. And, and um, it's a quieter role, but I think it's very important. And, and it's going to come more to the forefront as the series continues as well. And the humans, the humans, and being human myself, I like to think of them in the series as maybe the bridge between. Yes. You have such extremes. Yes. They can come to the middle and they can kind of be the mediator in a way. And yes. we've seen that in several of your yes. books. Having, having the human that's able to interact with both sides exactly, of that world. Exactly, exactly. And I mean, um, in the history of the world, because this is an alternate world, you know, there was the territorial wars when the changelings, you know, had, um, had a war. And it was a, you know, it was a human who, who went in and who, who was able to be the mediator because the Psy, you know, the, it was too political to have the Psy do it. And it was a human who did it. So the humans are, you know, they have a very strong role to play. And, and they are the bridge, you know, they are often the bridge between the two races. Yeah. Okay, so we just we're we're several books into the series, mm -hmm. and I I recommend people going back to the first one. Yes. Um, and, and in your first in your first uh, uh, slave sensation, the first book in the series, you have Lucas and Sasha. Mm -hmm. Lucas being a shifter, Sasha being a side, and yeah. so we really get the interaction between the races. And the reason 
I like to, to tell people to go back to the beginning is because it is it is so complex. By starting there, you get a feel for mm. the characters that we're going to follow up because you just exactly. had your book, Kiss of Snow, and and the very first characters we meet, we're still we're yes. st we still have we yeah. still are playing yeah. along with. I think it's um I do always say to people. I mean, you can jump in. I've had people say, you know, yeah. they jumped in with Kiss of Snow and they were okay, and then they went in and read the other books. But I always say, if you can, you know, start with Slave to Sensation. Mm -hmm. um, because you do, you know, the characters grow. I don't like to leave my characters static. You know, it's, it's, you see their lives developing. Um, you see Lucas and Sasha's relationship developing. And, but more, you also see the world growing. The world is organic and it, and it um, develops deeper facets from book to book. So if you read it, you know, the series in order, you get to see this very organic world and these characters whose lives you know are changing and as you said hawk and sienna were in book one mm -hmm. and you know book 10 is their book and you've seen them through you know most of the books and, and when, we, when we first meet them sienna's actually very young much very too young, young to get yes, into a relationship yes, yes. she is very young exactly and and but we've seen her mature and grow and so by the time we get to kiss of snow the interactions that she has with hawk we realize she's a very strong very independent woman now yes it can really hold her, her hold her own against even this totally alpha male. Exactly, exactly. She needed that time, you know, to grow. Mm -hmm. and, and, and I think even over the books, you have seen her starting oh, to develop and become a really independent, you know, individual who can handle Hawk. And um, obviously she's, she is young. And so you do have that youthfulness also um, in Kiss of Snow, but at the same time, she's not the girl she was in Slave to Sensation. She is, she is a young woman and, and she's, um, she knows what she wants. Um, and she's through with playing games and, you know, she's going for it, you know? Well, in, in uh, Kiss of Snow, I also really like that we saw, because she is part of that younger generation. Yes. Whereas before we had, you know, Nate and Lucas mm -hmm. and Judd and, and they kind of take up maybe the, the not, not older, but, but definitely the, the mature people who run, you know, run yeah. the packs and, and, and where they're at. And so with Sienna, we, we see this younger generation. Her friends are in their early 20s. Yes. They're taking orders from the alphas, from, you know, from who's in charge. Yeah. And so we really get this, this sense of kind of this younger, who's going to be coming up next, yes. and kind of the, the next generation of, yes. of your series. That was, that, I mean, that was really interesting because it was logical that you would see younger people because um, Sienna, you know, um, she's 19 going on 20. And so she's obviously going to have friends, you know, her own age. Um, and, and they will do things that, you know, people that age do. And so it, it wouldn't have made sense just to have her surrounded by, you know, the, you know, the older um, generation. Right, the, the 30 to 35 yeah, crowd yeah, is yeah, not necessarily... Yeah, it's not the same, you know. So um, that was quite natural in the book to have them in the story. And, and also it was part of Sienna's character as well. Um, obviously we're going to see who she's friends with and, and the people she hangs out with and who's close to her and, and who's her support system. You know, in the pack, because um, you don't want it. She's not isolated, and, and and I wanted to for people to see that that she's she very definitely has a very strong support system, you know, of her own that that will back her against Hawk as well. And I mean, I really love that about the pack, which is Hawk is alpha, but you know his pack isn't cowed by that. You know, they will they will go up against him and um, they'll throw their support behind Sienna if she needs it. You know, mm -hmm. and and I really like that. There's there's respect. There, um, but there's respect earned. There. Yes, there's respect it's not earned just, there. Oh, you're you're the leader, therefore I'm going to blindly follow you. Yeah, yeah, no, exactly, and that's what makes them so strong. Which is that this, these strong men like Riley and you know um, all of them, they choose to follow Hawk. You know, Riley and Indigo and everyone, they choose to follow Hawk, um, not simply because he's alpha, but because they think he should be alpha. He's a good alpha, you know, and 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 I really like that aspect of the series. Yeah. I'd follow Hawk, but I'd follow Lucas too. Like, I, I'd follow a lot of people. Yeah. <laughs> You're such a hussy. I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> I'll take you all. <laughs> well, I really, I want to talk about the next in the series because, uh -huh. because um, I know that Riaz is going to be your next hero. Yes. And, and I want to talk a little bit about his story. He's not a character we've necessarily seen, and we don't know him as well as some of, yes. some of the other. Some of the other heroes. Yes, it was interesting when I sat down to write the book. I um, I hadn't originally thought Riaz would be, you know, this book, but it was just such a compelling story. And I started writing. And I thought this is this is the book, and um, and then I just went with it. And I know people haven't known him as much, 
but from a writing perspective, I've, I've kind of been inside his head. Um, and from the first time he appeared, I thought, wow, this is, you know, such an interesting character. And because, you know, he, he did find the woman who was meant to be his mate, um, but she was already married to someone else. And right, and that means everything. They are, they, yes. there's such honor yes. amongst the changelings He's, that there's no way he would cross that he line. He would not, you know, he, he wasn't gonna destroy her marriage and, and anything like that, so he walked away. And so obviously that has had like a massive impact on him because to find your mate, you know, is, is just the most wonderful, thing that can happen to a changeling and so with Riaz it's like well he's never you know going to have that um, so what's going to happen and so I think the story you know it's going to be really really emotional um, it's going to be really intense because the heroine Adria you know she was she's been in a bad relationship for a long time um, so yeah it's 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 going to be an intense writing um, experience for me too I think yeah well, I know in Kiss of Snow, mm -hmm. um, there was a lot of focus on the politics because yes. you do have the size and the changeling starting to get into not just a a war of words, but actual battle. Yeah. yeah. And so I'm I'm wondering for the for this next book that you're going into now that we've now that we've had that battle and and we've seen what's happened, are we going to get the fallout to that, or are you going to go more back into the relationships? We're building up to pretty much what I see as the crescendo of the series, mm -hmm. or like the big climax, which I've always had in my mind from, from book one. Tell me it's the ghost. Tell me we, we've got a secret, a secret um, person that's <laughs> pulling the strings that nobody knows who it is. So, so it is going to be the yeah. ghost. Well, you will. I mean, you will eventually <laughs> find out the ghost. But yes, we're building up to a lot of things. And mm -hmm. so right now, we are going to keep building. There are certain okay. things coming mm -hmm. um, and certain fallout from the previous thing that happened as well. But there's gonna be this next book. I mean, it's a very strong relationship book, but it's also, there is a lot of stuff in the world happening. And so you're gonna see a lot of the arrows in particular. I think Aiden um, is going to be in the book a lot. And also, Counselor Caleb Krejcik, I think, ah. is going to play a strong role so, in this so book. The arrows are kind of the assassin squad. Yes. The side. So yeah. they are they are kind of killing machines in a way because they they're not supposed to have emotion. No. And when you say shoot this person in the head, that's their job. That's their job. That they will do it. But um, I mean, with the arrows now, they're they're conflicted because mm -hmm. they are being asked. They their goal has always been silence, which is the program that. Um, conditions emotion out of the Psy. Um, and so their, their goal has always been to maintain silence. That has been their, that's, that's why they started. And you know that, and, but they've been asked to do things that they think have been for the personal um, advancement of certain counselors. And that's not, that's not in, you know, that's not what they were meant to be. And so now they're conflicted. They are choosing, they're, they are choosing sides now. And um, I think it's gonna be really interesting what the arrows, you know where the errors are going to end up when it when it's all over. And, and I think I like that you're bringing Caleb Krychek into it because he is a counselor for the Psy. Mm -hmm. He's one of the Psy leaders, but he's one. Of, he plays really close to the vets. Yes. You don't quite know which side he's yes. going to choose, and and if not even if he's really good or bad at this no, point, you're yeah. like he could go either way. He could go either like. way, and he's playing all sides, and yeah. and and you know. And he, he gets his hands dirty. He is. He, he is not afraid to get his hands dirty. He will take you out if you get in his yeah, way. Yeah, yeah. He's and he's massively powerful. He mm -hmm. is one of the most powerful, you know, um, people in the net. So he's just a really interesting character. I, I can't wait. I can't even tell you how excited I am. <laughs> I'm, I'm really. I mean, I, I'm really looking forward to diving into the book. You know, after I um, get home, and I'll just be jumping in and and. Um, you know, just riding away, I can't wait.